well, what was one of the most exciting aspects of your work to me, which was the, the conditioning kind of experiments. Mm -hmm. So you, you have present some evidence that seems to show that plants are able to learn. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that, what, that, the experiment that you performed and what you take the results to be? Yes, yeah, so I think you're referring to the peas, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the maze. Well, so um, the story is pretty simple. I think that uh, many of us are familiar with the Pavlovian dog. And so, you know, Pavlov had noticed that the dog would salivate before dinner. And then he, you know, he added the bell and he realized that like, the dog doesn't care about the bell, but if I always ring the bell and then give dinner, the dog soon learns that, oh, the bell means the dinner is coming. And so it starts salivating, even if there is no dinner around. <laughs> Um, so that was pretty much the simple, you know, the, the bones of the experiment is like, okay, so can the plants do this as well? So can the plants learn to associate something that is totally meaningless uh, to something that he wants? And then just the meaningless thing acquires meaning. And so the plants will respond just like the dog to the bell. So in my experiment, of course, dinner was light for the plants. And, uh, and it took me a while to work out which one would be an, uh, a, neutral, um, a neutral cue that the plants really wouldn't care about. Because, of course, again, what people maybe doesn't realize is like uh, we're so focused on movement and we think the plants are stupid because they don't move. But because they don't move, they are absolutely super alert about all sorts of cues, much more than animals probably. And so because they can't just uh, uproot and go as an animal would do. Uh, so they need to really be sensitive to a lot of things all the time to know how to engage and, and protect themselves or engage with the environment appropriately. So, so that was the challenge because I knew the plants would be very sensitive to many things. And it's like, okay, so what do I use that they really don't care about? And so I ended up settling for these, um, it was a little tiny fan from computers, you know, and, um, and of course, I mean, I know the plants are sensitive to uh, wind and so I'm pretty sure that they would have detected the, the cue but the point wasn't whether they can I mean the bell also makes a sound and of course the, the dog can detect the sound but it's more what kind of value the dog or my plant in this case gave to the cue and so then I tested it as part of the pilot study and you could see that the plant really didn't care about the fan and so there was like okay we got something here <laughs> to start with so then what I did, just like Pablo did with the dog, I just uh, presented the fan, followed always by the blue light, which was dinner, and done that for a few days, swapping it around because plants are very good at like, oh, the light came from there, so I'm going there. <laughs> and um, so I had to kind of trick the plant as I, oh, you're not going to know which way it's going to come. And so really the only thing that is going to give you the cue is if you work out that the fan is the only thing that is going to precede the light. And that's your cue. And so, um, so that's what I did. And so I did the, the training for about three days. And the training consisted in these uh, fun light paired up together uh, over you know, the course of the day. And the plant was a little pea seedling, which was uh, planted at the bottom. If you imagine like a, a Y, the shape of the letter Y. So there is a part here where you know, the plant is just growing and learning. <laughs> And then if he has actually learned, when he hits the, the intersection and he has to turn one way or another, uh, if he has learned and there is only the fan available, there is no light, and he has learned that the light is going to follow the fan if you, if you understood this, then the plants would go towards the fan. If he hasn't learned, then what the plant would do, which is, was also part of the, of the pilot uh, data, what the plant would do if it hasn't learned, it would rely on its instinct. And the instinct of plants is, of these plants specifically, but all plants, is to go to where they saw the light last time. Right. So when I did the pilot, all my peas, like 100% of my peas, went to the light where they saw the light last time, if there was no fan involved. So that was the baseline, you know? 0% go randomly, like wherever. All of them know exactly where the light was presented last time. And this is the safest, I mean, it makes sense. It's the safest place to go. That's where it was. So it's likely that it's going to be there again. Now, when you train them, 
and you provide this association or possibility to associate the fan with the light, then uh, in two different, I had two case scenario, but like uh, between 60 and 70% of the plants actually turn away from that instinctual response and they trust something that, you know, really didn't have any meaning and suddenly now it does. And that it's huge because uh, it means that there, are, there, there is a decision there, there is a choice. It's like, this will be, going to where I saw the light last time would be the safest thing to do. But I actually know that that's not the case. I know that this fan that didn't mean anything to me at the beginning, now it's got some meaning and suddenly it's, part, it's got value. So, which of course implies that the plant is not only, you know, kind of um, calculating what is worthwhile and what is not, but there is a value associated to things. And uh, it doesn't have a brain, uh, which of course suggests that, you know, this is possible, it can be done, this kind of um, behavioral expression can be done without a brain. It doesn't have neurons or a nervous system, so that's not facilitated by these structures. So what other ways uh, the plant is doing this, I don't know. And that's the part of the more mechanistic question that I leave to the physiologist, but, um, but he's doing it. And that was for me the, the thing that it was like, oh my God, they're doing it. <laughs> they know, 